All right, for those of you who are playing along, um, I'm going to continue with the reading. Um, obviously, this will always be available on my site, so if at any point uh, you want to go back and uh, watch these, even if you haven't been playing along so far, um, it'll be here for you. So we're picking up after uh, Montag has walked out in the rain. His wife couldn't care less whether he stays or he goes. And here we go. The rain was thinning away and the girl was walking in the center of the sidewalk with her head up and a few drops falling on her face. She smiled when she saw Montag. Hello, he said, hello, and then said, what are you up to now? I'm still crazy. The rain feels good. I love to walk in it. I don't think I'd like that, he said. You might if you tried. I never have. She licked her lips. Rain even tastes good. What do you do, go around trying everything once, he asked? Sometimes twice. She looked at something in her hand. What have you got there, he said. I guess it's the last of the dandelions this year. I didn't think I'd find one on the lawn this late. Haven't you ever heard of rubbing it under your chin? Look. She touched her chin with the flower, laughing. Why? If it rubs off, it means I'm in love. Has it? He could hardly do anything else but look. Well, she said, you're yellow under there. Fine, let's try you now. It won't work for me. Here. Before he could move, she put the dandelion under his chin. He drew back and she laughed. Hold still. She peered under his chin and frowned. Well, he said, what a shame, she said, you're not in love with anyone. Yes, I am. It doesn't show. I am very much in love. He tried to conjure up a face to fit the words, but there was no face. I am. Oh, please don't look that way. It's that dandelion, he said, you've used it all up on yourself. That's why it won't work for me. Of course, that must be it. Oh, now I've upset you. I can see I have. I'm sorry. I really am. She touched his elbow. No, no, he said quickly. I'm all right. I've got to be going, so say you forgive me. I don't want you angry with me. I'm not angry. Upset, yes. I've got to go see my psychiatrist now. They make me go. I make up things to say. I don't know what he thinks of me. He says I'm a regular onion. I keep him busy peeling away the layers. I'm inclined to believe you need the psychiatrist, said Montag. You don't mean that. He took a breath and let it out, and at last said, no, I don't mean that. The psychiatrist wants to know why I go out and hike around in the forest and watch the birds and collect butterflies. I'll show you my collection someday. Good. They want to know what I do with all my time, and I tell them that sometimes I just sit and think, but I won't tell them what, I've got them running. And sometimes I tell them, I like to put my head back like this and let the rain fall in my mouth. It tastes just like wine. Have you ever tried it? No, I... You have forgiven me, haven't you? Yes. He thought about it. Yes, I have. God knows why. You're peculiar. You're aggravating. Yet you're easy to forgive. You say you're 17? Well, next month. How odd. How strange. And my wife, 30, and yet you seem so much older at times. I can't get over it. You're peculiar yourself, Mr. Montag. Sometimes I even forget you're a fireman. Now, may I make you angry again? Go ahead. How did it start? How did you get into it? How did you pick your work, and how did you happen to think to take the job you have? You're not like the others. I've seen a few, I know. When I talk, you look at me. When I said something about the moon, you looked at the moon last night. The others would never do that. The others would walk off and leave me talking or threaten me. No one has time anymore for anyone else. You're one of the few who put up with me. That's why I think it's so strange a requirement. It just doesn't seem right for you somehow. He felt his body divide itself into a hotness and a coldness, a softness and a hardness, a trembling and a not trembling, the two halves grinding one upon the other. You better run off to your appointment, he said. And she ran off and left him standing there in the rain. Only after a long time did he move. And then very slowly as he walked, he tilted his head back into the rain just for a few moments and opened his mouth. The mechanical hound slept but did not sleep, lived but did not live in its gently humming, gently vibrating, softly illuminated kennel back in the dark corner of the firehouse. 
the dim light of one in the morning, the moonlight from the open sky framed through the great window, touched here and there on the brass and the copper and the steel of the faintly trembling beast. Light flickered on bits of ruby glass and on sensitive capillary hairs in the nylon brush nostrils of the creature that quivered gently, gently, its eight legs spidered under it on a rubber padded paws. Montag slid down the brass pole. He went out to look at the city and the clouds had cleared, complete, cleared away completely. And he lit a cigarette and came back to bend down and look at the hound. It was like a great bee come home from some field where the honey is full of poison wildness of insanity and nightmare. Its body crammed with that over-rich nectar and now it was sleeping evil out of itself. Hello, whispered Montag, fascinated as always with the dead beast, the living beast. Nights when things got dull, which was every night, the men slid down the brass poles and set the ticking combinations of the olfactory system of the hound and let loose rats in the firehouse airway, and sometimes chickens, sometimes cats that would have to be drowned anyway. And there would be betting to see which of the chickens or cats or rats the hound would seize first. The animals were turned loose. Three seconds later, the game was done. The rat, cat, or chicken caught halfway across the areaway, gripped in gentling paws while a four-inch hollow steel needle plunged down from the proboscis of the hound to inject massive jolts of morphine or procrane. Procaine. The pawn was then tossed to the incinerator. A new game began. Montag stayed upstairs most night when this went on. There had been a time two years ago when he'd bet with the best of them and lost a week's salary and faced Mildred's insane anger, which showed itself in veins and blotches. But now nights he lay in his bunk, face turned to the wall, listening to the whoops of laughter below and the piano string scurry of rat feet, the violent squeaking of mice, the great shadowed motion silence of the hound leaping out like a moth in the raw light, finding, holding his victim, inserting needle and going back to its kennel to die as if a switch had been turned. Montag touched the muzzle. The hound growled. Montag jumped back. The hound half rose in its kennel and looked at him with green-blue neon lights flickering in its suddenly activated eyeballs. It growled again, a strange rasping combination of electric sizzle, a frying sound, a scraping of metal, a turning of cogs that seemed rusty and ancient with suspicion. No, no, boy. And Montag, his heart pounding. He saw the silver needle extend upon the air an inch, pull back, extend, pull back. The growl simmered in the beast and it looked up at him. Montag backed up. The hound took a step from its kennel. Montag grabbed the brass pole with one hand. The pole reacting slid upward, took him through the ceiling quickly, quietly. He stepped off in the half lit deck of the upper tunnel. He was trembling and his face was green white. Below, the hound had sunk back on its eight incredible insect legs and was humming to itself again, its multi-faceted eyes at peace. Montag stood, letting the fears pass by the drop hole. Behind him, four men at a card table under a green-lidded light in the corner glanced briefly but said nothing. Only the man with the captain's hat and the sign of the phoenix on his hat, at last curious, his playing cards in his thin hand, talked across the long room. Montag? It doesn't like me, said Montag. What, the hound? Captain studies his cards. Come off it, it doesn't like or dislike. It just functions. It's like a lesson in ballistics. As a trajectory, we decide on for it. It follows through. It targets itself, homes itself, and cuts off. It's only copper wire stored batteries and electricity. Montag swallowed. Its calculators can be set to any combination. So many amino acids, so much sulfur, so much butter, fat, and alkaline, right? We all know that. All those chemical balances and percentages on all of us here in the house are recorded in the master files downstairs. It'd be easy for someone to set up a partial combination on the hound's memory, a touch of amino acids, perhaps. That would account for what the animal did just now, reacted toward me. Hell, said the captain. Irritated, but not completely angry. Just enough memory set up in it by someone, so it growled when I touched it. Who would do a thing like that, asked the captain. You haven't any enemies here, guy. None that I know of. We'll have the hound checked by our technicians tomorrow. This isn't the first time it's threatened me, said Montag. Last time it happened twice. We'll fix it up, don't worry. But Montag did not move and only stood thinking of the ventilator grill in the hall at home and what lay hidden behind the grill. If someone here in the firehouse knew about the ventilator, 
and mightn't they tell the hound? The captain came over to the drop hole and gave Montag a questioning glance. So I was just figuring, said Montag. What does the hound think about down there nights? Is it coming alive on us, really? It makes me cold. It doesn't think anything we don't want it to think. That's sad, said Montag quietly, because all we put into it is hunting and finding and killing. What a shame if that's all it can ever know. Beatty snorted gently. Hell, it's a fine bit of craftsmanship. A good rifle that can fetch its own target and guarantees the bullseye every time. That's why, said Montag, I wouldn't want to be its next victim. Why, you got a guilty conscience about something? Montag glanced up swiftly. Beatty stood there, looking at him steadily with his eyes, while his mouth opened and began to laugh very softly.